Welcome to the Work in Progress podcast, where we keep our whip in check. And now, here's Michelle, certified coach and founder of Strive Coaching Studio. Welcome to the Work in Progress podcast. Hello, everybody. I have an amazing guest today. I'm so excited to welcome Molly Elkman. And many of you in my audience may know Molly because she is one, the author of the House That She Built book, and she runs a very successful marketing agency in the home, for home builders called Group Two. And so many people know you, Molly, but many people don't. And I'm excited to talk to you today. So welcome. Happy to Thank have you here. You. Thank you so much. I am so happy to be here. And I know we have so much to talk about and oh. I'm excited to, um, to, to chat. Yeah. Well, you have so many successes and so many great things happening in your life right now that we do have a lot to talk about. And <laughs> I, the reason I'm so excited to have you on the podcast, um, for, there's a million reasons. Um, you've seen so many successes. You are obviously very ambitious. You aren't afraid to take on a lot of things including momming, right? That's a hard <laughs> thing. Um, and the purpose of my podcast is to talk about how we're all a work in progress, no matter what. So no matter what we've succeeded to do, whatever we've accomplished, whatever position we've held, wherever we've gone in life, like one, it's not perfect. And two, we haven't figured it out yet. We're still a work in progress. So Molly, have you figured it out yet? Tell us. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I I have not figured out anything, but I am always figuring it out. <laughs> and I think that's, that's a good thing. Beauty, right? Is laughing yeah. at yourself and just trying new things and not being afraid. Um, I think anytime you're stagnant is, you know, and not willing to work on yourself and grow, you're, yeah. you're not going to be successful. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to get anywhere. You're going to kind of, in fact, I think you get smaller. You actually get smaller if you're not willing to keep growing and put yourself out there. So absolutely. And, th and that is not where you are right now. So tell us about what you're doing. What are you do? What are you doing at group two? Tell me about your team. Tell us yes. all about it. Okay. So group two is a full service marketing partner for home builders around the country. And we are, I really think we're the only full service. So that means we do everything that um, a builder would need to have a marketing program, everything from their website to their sales offices, to any kind of collateral, all SEM, SEO, digital, social, you know, everything. Awesome. So um, we have a team of about 35 people. We're broken into departments and um, each department is specialized in working with the home builders. Um, that they work with, but also in their specific area. So the person who's doing your SEM works with the team that's doing your social and your creative, but everyone is highly specialized in what they do. Amazing. And we have the best team in the world. <laughs> of course you do. Of course you do. Um, so tell me when you started the company and you, you actually um, kind of walked into a leadership position, which you can tell us about, but how many people were there when you began? When you yeah, started. so um, I joined Group Two in during the the last downturn, mm -hmm. and it was my dad's company. And I actually didn't come in in a leadership position. I came in from the very bottom to to learn and observe and grow. Um, and I I came in. There were at the time that I took over the business, there were four people. Wow. And yeah. And now we have 35. Um, the business has grown every single year since I took over year over year. And my husband and I actually work together. We're an amazing team professionally. Um, and Love it. We, are, we have very different personalities and interests. So um, that helps with that balance. But yeah, it's been, it's been amazing to, to grow it. And I've learned so much along the way. And I still am. <laughs> So fun. And I, it's, I didn't realize that you and your husband were working together. I love that. Yeah. I think that that's such a great, um, example and role model for, you know, a lot of people, a lot of couples and really recognizing to me that there's so much value in the balance of those personalities and how you come, you can complement each other and really bring your best skills and trust yeah, and all that trust that comes with that. Oh yes. And so 
You know, it's interesting. I worked with my dad and then, and now I work with my husband. And I think in any family business, there are a lot of nuances and learnings that are specific to family business. And one of the things that I love is so many home building companies are family businesses. So you're dealing with a different dynamic, a different, um, you know, different things. Um, and it really can be something amazing that strengthens relationships and, and gives relationships like a whole nother dynamic because, um, it's, you know, you see your, your partner at home in one way, and then you see professionally how, um, those personality traits are really beneficial, you know, something not (laughs) right. So like, you know, I, I had mentioned to you earlier, like I am, relentless, just like in my personality. So like at home, I'm, that's probably pretty annoying, but (laughs) professionally it has served us really well. So that kind of softens at home. Like my husband knows, okay, like this is a personality trait that serves us as a family, even though at home, it might be a little annoying. (laughs) Yes. Well, and you're aware of it at least. So that's a big deal. Yes. Totally. Yeah. So good. So I'm curious for you, what was it like for you to grow the company and become the leader you are today versus what you had to do with the steps along the way in order to grow? Yeah, I would say without a doubt, the most important thing was surrounding myself with the right people. Mm. Um, It can be really hard when you're, you know, you're invested in your team. Um, You, you really are invested in the people around you. And sometimes you you don't have the right people or you don't have the people in the right seats. And I will say, um, I think the businesses that don't fix that as quickly as possible tend to have a much slower growth path. Um, you know, I've, I did have to make some hard decisions early on and people that I, you know, thought were great people that just weren't the right person to necessarily take us to the next level. That's one of the really, really hard parts um, is that, is like really being able to identify and separate. Like, I love this person. I think they're a great person. Is that the right person in this seat to take us to the next level? I think the piece you just said is so key for everyone to really take away from this is it doesn't mean you don't like the person. It doesn't doesn't. mean they're a bad person. It doesn't mean that they're not a good person or good at many, many things and highly valuable. You can have a great friendship. And even, you know, I know a lot of people who are in family have to make those decisions. And at the end of the day, that's key, like separating those two. Yeah. I think there are a lot of sides to success and growth that are like really hard. Yeah. And, um, the more comfortable you get with those hard things, the better you are as a leader. So like, you know, I don't even like, I don't even like the idea. Like I, I say this, I never want to be good at firing someone. Like that's just not something that I ever like want to be good at. I don't even like that word. Like I genuinely look at an employee employer relationship as like a partnership. It has to work on both sides. So it's really to me like a parting of ways. So, um, I I have had people who have left group two, who I, you know, we hug and cry and I write them letters of recommendation or they send me someone who they think might be a fit. I think um, there are ways to to part ways from someone where it can be done with like mutual respect. Totally. And usually by the time you're at that point, nobody's really that surprised for the most part. Totally. You've, you've led up to that. And for the most part, you probably already both know exactly where things are at that point. Yeah. Yeah, That's a great lesson because I think people get really caught up in that. And you're right. If you don't act on it quickly, you're, you're holding your business back and you're holding the other people on your team back. Yeah. I think, you know, when, when we think about success, a lot of people think about, you know, the path and the growth, all these, you know, build up things. And the yes. truth is a lot of it is, is really hard. And the, yeah. that, um, you know, being resilient and relentless, and that is so important because you have to get through those things and not let it distract you from moving forward and yeah, or that, scare you or scare you. Yeah. Yes. And not everyone can do it. So, right. you know, I think, um, I've learned that too, is like, 
leaders in any leadership position should be really proud of, of what they are able to accomplish because not everyone is meant for that role. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love that you said that. And so at this stage of where you are with the company right now, what, what do you feel like the keys are to being a great leader of, of 35 people, very successful company. You have a lot going on there, obviously with all the departments. And if you're managing everything, that's a lot of balance. So what's it like to be a leader now? What does it take? Yeah. So, um, it, it changes all the time. How you mm -hmm. lead changes. It changes depending on the people, depending on your clients, depending on what's going on in the world. So um, for one, I am very, very fortunate. I have built the company in a way where we have a leadership team. So every department has a department lead. So I really, they really are the ones that the team report to and they manage the day-to-day -day interactions. Our leadership team is extremely strong. We are, we all practice radical candor, which means we, um, we, we tell each other like, we're very honest with each other and we're coming from a place of trying to help each other. So um, again, it always comes back to the people. I would say for me as a leader, the hardest transition was going to work from home. I am not just by nature. I'm not a in front of a camera person. I am like very much an in-person person. person. <laughs> and it can be really hard to, you know, I've always been very, um, aware of my weaknesses and, and places I can do better, but it's really hard to have that as a weakness because that's the business, right? The business has changed. So that's something for me that um, I'm not as good of a leader remotely and I have to overcompensate for that. And I have to actively manage myself to show up and to reach out. And, and I, I would be lying if I said I'm doing it successfully. I'm still figuring it out. And, you know, my husband and I were walking into the office today and I was talking about some of the things that I want to do and how I want to connect with different team members. And I don't have it figured out, but I'm figuring it out. <laughs> and that's the key to not just throw up the towel and decide, okay, I'm just not good at this. Right. But to say, okay, I'm, I know it's important. I know it's an opportunity for me to grow and I'm figuring it out. Like that's a whole different attitude for how you can approach your day. For yeah. Sure. You know, it's, it's, we're not going to grow to the next level. Like we will stay stagnant if we don't, you know, continue to grow and invest and, and evolve, you know, yes. our business model has shifted so much over the 12 years where I've owned group two. Yes. And, you know, if I don't shift with those changes, then I yeah. can't be the leader. So it's, re it's really interesting. And, you know, you have to let some of those changes happen organically and, and you have to make sure that you are changing and growing, um, along with the company. For sure. You, you and I were talking about this earlier, and this is such a great example of it is, and, and you can share the story, but reinvention has been really the key to the success of your company over, oh, yeah. over all of the years, because, Previous to you joining, it was a very different company based on the times that we were in at that yes, time. Absolutely. Yeah. So my dad started um, Group 2, and it was a predominantly print agency for mm -hmm. home builders. So Group 2 really did those like beautiful brochures, um, you know, heavy print, um, with, you know, the 80s and the 90s. By the time that I came to group two, it was really um, the beginning of social media. Social, they, There were no social media business pages yet. It was just personal profiles. Um, because of my age and the time that I was in school, I was very early on social media. Um, and I really started with that. I mean, I started my career through social media marketing and introducing that concept um, to the building industry and my and bringing that to builders as a product. Um, but that really helped me start my path of developing Group 2 into a digital marketing company. That is such an, a great story. And I talk to a lot of leaders all the time about how in your company, you need to look at that company's leadership if you want to grow to decide if those leaders, back to the best person in the right seat, right? 
can really take it to the next level. Like the leadership has to grow and change. Either the people themselves have to change or you need to swap out the seats in order to take it to the next level. And that's such a great example of it. And it sounds like that's where you are right now. Yeah, you know, everyone, every human has different skills that are just natural to them that really excite them and get them motivated. And that goes that's at every level of employment. Right. So when you can tap into the skills that really um, are the natural skills for people, rather than trying to fit them into a perfect role or a perfect job exactly as it is, yeah. um, when you can find that and be invested in giving them those opportunities to use those skills, I have found that that has worked really well because it makes each person at Group 2 feel that they own their career path, that they have the ability to try new things and 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 explore their professional growth, knowing that they're supported and that there are different um, paths for them. So I'm a big believer in not trying to like mold people into the role, but, but more using their skills to... Um, to fit, if that makes bring, sense. Bring their best. Yeah. Bring yeah. their superpowers because then the whole company gains so much more for sure. Yeah. And I, you know, some people on our leadership team are very analytical. They're great with documents, but they're not as great at getting in front of the agency and tell, you know, saying, Hey, yeah. everyone we're doing X, Y, and Z. So, you know, just because they're the department lead in that department doesn't mean that they're the one who has to do that. We really work together. Yeah. That's such a great lesson. Yeah. So in terms of your path, since we were talking about that and we've talked about family business now too, who have been your role models? Who have been your mentors along the way? And tell us why. Ah, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I am like someone who tries to take like little pieces from people I admire. And mm. I, I don't have like one or two people that I admire. Okay. I have different parts of different people that I think are spectacular. And it could be something as little as, you know, that person, when I'm with them, they make, they like are fully giving me their attention. And like, I want to, that specific feeling is something that is like, I want to learn from. So like, it's something very, very specific from that person. So um, I have a lot of mentors, um, and they're different people from different industries or people who have just crossed my path that I'm like, I want to be like you in that way. Like, I want that energy. I want to, um, learn from that. It doesn't mean, you know, I have some mentors who one area of their life, I, I don't necessarily like want to emulate or, or be, but there is something very specific that I can learn from them. And I think where some people go wrong in looking for a mentor is they're looking for this like one perfect person who can apply, you know, direction to them for every aspect of, of their life. And I don't think that that's real. I think you can literally learn from everyone around you. Um, and when you do see something that you admire in someone else, that's an opportunity to to kind of like dig a little deeper and learn more about it. Yeah. Um, I've had incredible support within the housing industry as far as like mentors and people I've learned from. Um, the industry has been like wonderful to me and I feel like I just have like, like a whole network of like people. Um, and I also, I think you can learn from people who are older than you, who are younger than you, who are in different, different jobs, different industries. So I can't give you like a perfect answer because I don't have one perfect, I have one person, I have many. I think that is the perfect answer because we, <laughs> we talked about this going in, everybody's work in progress. None of us are good at, none of us have figured it out. None yeah. of us are good at everything, but we all bring, we all bring our natural value and our superpowers that we love and that we're passionate about. And if that can inspire each of us to one, recognize that that's an area where we want to grow and then, you know, want to use them as an example and learn from them. I think that's amazing. Isn't that kind of the point? <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree. And even people who I consider like mentees or, or they may look to me as a mentor, like I really do try to, to show them the things I'm not good at. Like, I don't, I think it's important that you don't like 
put anyone on like such a pedestal because I, I think that's setting people up for failure. Like there are a lot of things that are hard and challenging and that don't come naturally to me. Yeah. Um, what I try to do is lean into the things that I, I am naturally skilled at and then get support around me for the things that are harder for me. Yeah. Being resourceful, that relentlessness, that's how you, right. how you find that for sure. Right. But if you ask me to look at a spreadsheet or to like do our numbers, you know, I, I, I would never be able to maintain my passion for what I do if I was spending so much of my energy on the things I'm not good at. And I think a lot of successful people get pulled into that. So all of a sudden, as you rise in your career, you're doing less of what you love and you got to fix that as quickly as possible. You want to surround yourself with the people who are really good at the stuff that you maybe don't enjoy as much so that you can really focus on the things that drive you and motivate you. Otherwise you lose your passion. Such good advice. Everybody needs to, and we know we need a reminder of it too, pretty frequently because it, like you said, it can pull you in a direction and before you know it. Yep. And you're going down the wrong road. That's so we talked about yeah, totally. Yeah. So we were talking earlier about how, you know, when we are trying to set our sights on success or the thing we want or the goals that it's just this easy, nice climb up a mountain, right? Until we get there. Um, how's that been for you? Is that how it went? <laughs> yes, uh, it did not. It was, it, there was no mountain climb. It was uh, much more like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I what? think that, that that's like the myth of like yeah. success and work-life balance like that's not real <laughs> right <laughs> where, right right you know there are different stages of your life where you are climbing that mountain and there are different stages where it feels much more like a plateau or even yeah. a decline you have to go down a little in order to go back up I mean it just changes and sometimes it's what's going on in the world it could be COVID it could be a sick family member it could be that you're having a child I mean life. And, you know, you have to, you have to adapt to that moment in your life. So, you know, when I was home with little, little kids, I, that's not going to be the time where I am on the road and, you know, out there and giving presentations. So you have to like really be where you are in that moment in your life with your family, with your, um, personal life, all of that. So ah, your people who you love, definitely you, not a mountain. <laughs> it's not a mountain. No. Um, but so you're right. I like to refer to it as like the seasons of your life. You know, you've got this season going on. These are the priorities right now. And same with the mentors. Like I might need a mentor role model when I'm, when I have little kids at home versus a different role model later in life. Absolutely. Yeah. And the other, the other thing with that is it almost never is how you think it's going to be. So like, for example, you know, my husband's mom, um, got very sick, um, and, and had a, a terminal diagnosis, um, that was really like jarring and surprising. It was out, you know, we hadn't expected it. That is a life shift for all of yes. us. And, yes. um, you know, part of, part of that is just, um, you know, really recognizing that your, your life is changing and that, you know, it is going to affect your career and that doesn't have to be a bad thing. So, um, you know, after that I had learned, I had, we had gotten into such like a dark, sad place. And what actually came from that was I wrote the house that she built. Be Amazing. And that became this like light that just gave me joy and, um, helped me, you know, get out of that. Like every one of us has, you know, you don't become an adult without having like tragedy in your life and like really hard stuff, like real stuff, the heavy stuff that is like hard to get through. And if you don't find something on the other side that like pulls you through, um, it can be really hard. And that's where people get stuck. Yeah, so, I think, yeah. yeah. I, well, I think people get stuck because for some reason we have this idea that there shouldn't be hard things, that it won't be, that we, we shouldn't feel bad when bad things happen or that maybe right. bad things shouldn't happen at all. So we get stuck in that way. 
But really, that is what moves us through life and creates all these new gifts and opportunities for us. And when you, that doesn't make going through the hard thing better, but just knowing that it's real and it's okay. And it's part of the experience of being here. And that's, that's all of it yeah. right there. And I think a lot of people think that leaders and successful people are rah, rah, go team all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. And that's not real. I mean, yeah. you have, you have to be where you are in your life. And yep. then you, what, what does make successful people stand apart is like, I was saying that, that ability on the other side to like, get yes. back in. Like, so you were saying reinventing it's that same thing, like finding that spark or a spark over and over again, because the spark in your career, it doesn't stay. It flickers. It goes yeah. out sometimes. Like you have to refine it and reignite yeah. it. A hundred percent. I love that you said that. So Tell us about the journey and how that came to be. You said you always wanted to write a children's book. Yes. So here's my book. Yay. The house that she built. The house that she built. So, and I love the image on the back. I have to show that. So, so great. Really great. The house that love she it. built was inspired by a real build. Um, it was, my friend was the general contractor on it and they decided to do a project where all the jobs were done by women and women owned companies. And the intent was to show that women can do every single job that goes into building a home. And they did prove that. And at the end of um, working on this project, we did the marketing, we created a brand, you know, we created social media content to really elevate and show the women working on this home. At the end, I had this like sadness that this was going to go away. And it was during the time that um, my mother-in-law was sick and I was very focused on that and just something clicked. I had always wanted to write a children's book and I had this like aha moment of, oh my gosh, this is that. And as soon as that spark happened, I reached out to my friend, the general contractor, and I was like, listen, I've always wanted to write a children's book. Can I tell this story um, and, you know, the creative director at group two and I had named the house, the house that she built. So we really loved the name and we wanted to keep the same name. Um, and she is the illustrator of the book and Gosh, we just love it. This became our passion project. And we just, we, we had the manuscript and we were so excited to put it in front of people and we had support right away. Um, Anderson Corporation and 84 Lumber were immediate contributors. Without them, we wouldn't have been able to print the book. Um, and in the first year, we printed 50,000 books. Wow. It's a lot. Yeah. It's incredible. That is incredible. And so you wrote the book in like 2021 timeframe, 2020? Yes. Yeah. And, and so 50,000 is like your, how many you've sold so far or yeah. printed? Yeah. Yeah. So what's interesting. And so the, now see, look, I'm learning a whole nother industry. So yes. I've been marketing my whole life. That's my, you know, my passion and my skill. Um, and it's, it's served me very well with the book because a huge part of publishing a book successfully is the marketing. Like it really yes. is. You have to, you know, call everyone and share the the book and why it's important. Um, so we had, um, actually we already had the manuscript. So we had written it for the women to, um, read at their grand opening. So we had the man, the first manuscript before we even realized we wanted to do a book. So we were able to like really fast track, um, the process. So we, we ended up going with NEHB builder books. So they're a trade publisher. So okay. what that did was we wanted to keep the proceeds in the industry and we want all the proceeds of the book go back into workforce development programming, which is important to everyone in the entire industry because we need a future workforce. You know, we're, we all tend to look at um, workforce development as like an immediate problem because it is an immediate problem. But if we don't fix the long-term problem, we're going to continually have an issue. So our whole idea is to get in front of really young kids and change the perception of these careers before they decide that that's a secondary path. 
I love that. That is amazing. And yeah, so you're, you're like a kindergarten teacher most of the time. Show everybody your shirt. You showed me your shirt earlier. <laughs> Find your spark. I yeah. So I, ha I mean, if you saw my, um, I'm not even going to show you, but if you saw my office, you'd be like, oh, you are a kindergarten teacher. I have hard hats. I have little construction vests. I have puzzles. And um, I, you know, I go into classrooms and really anyone in our industry can do it. So the whole point is for the house that she built to be a tool for anyone to go in and talk about housing and these careers and even share what they do in the industry. Um, we have free activity pages. Um, so the whole idea is to kind of change that mentality starting from kindergarten. Yeah, so amazing. amazing. Yeah. And I of course love I it. have a kindergartner, my daughter's in kindergarten. So, um, you know, she, she really helped in, you know, picking she's bragging. Things. She's, your, she's marketing and PR. Well, she, was, <laughs> yeah, she was bragging a lot. She loved it. And then this past, um, this past month, we had an, a birthday party for her and she's like, mom, please do not give them the house that she built. <laughs> she's like, we give everyone that present. And I was like, okay, honey. Um, and enough is then, enough, mom. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so great. So um, I told her, I was like, well, I am bringing it to read in your class. And she's like, mom. And then I said, well, now with that attitude, I'm bringing the vests, the hard hats, the activities, the tools, we're going full force. And the class went nuts for it. Wow. One of, one of her um, little classmates raised her hand and she said, are you famous? And I could see my daughter and which I'm obviously not like, it was like so funny because she's a kindergartner in that but all, of a sudden, all of a sudden, my daughter was like, Oh, the house that she built is cool. Yeah. I'm back in again. I'm signing you back up. <laughs> right. I was like, okay, thanks. <laughs> Give me the toolbox. All right. Yeah. She's wearing the shirt every day. And Love it. she, you know, what a great inspiration you are to obviously so many in the industry, but to your own kids, when you get to be an inspiration yeah. to your kids, that's the best. Well, what's cool is, so my older um, child is my son. He's a sixth grader and he's gone with me to some book signing events nice. and he really helps. And it's so interesting because kids don't necessarily understand and like, oh, mom and dad have a business and they have a team. Like they don't really understand what that means, but the book they get, like it's something yes. tangible. Yes. And that, and that, um, that is like, you see him like think it's so cool. Like he's like, well, my friends have never met an author. And um, it's just like really adorable and sweet because um, it gets them excited and asking questions. And um, again, like the whole premise of the house that she built is to cultivate curiosity. So even, you know, finding a way to cultivate curiosity in kids about what you do in general is just so rewarding. Yes. So cool. So cool. And obviously you're passionate about it. And so what, um, when you talk about the workforce development and what you want to inspire there, what are your kind of main passions surrounding that? Is the book the main way that pe somebody could participate with that? Is that the way yeah. to do that? So the house that she built has really become a movement. So it's not about the house that was built. It's not about the book. It's really become something much larger. And it's just this idea of showing girls they can do anything and also changing the conver conversation around careers and construction. So um, this movement, people can participate in a lot of different ways. So one, we have a Girl Scout patch. We also have um, free lesson plans for teachers that go with the book that are just very hands-on activities to get kids thinking. Kids who design their dream room and then they present it to their class and get to explain what's special about it. We've also done um, like those old school dioramas, like, you know, how you used to bring in a shoe box and build out a room. Yes. And we did this as an all school activity where every child built a, their dream room. And then they all came to the gym and we put them together and made the house that the school built. And yeah. they, it was so cool. And they just loved looking at each other's rooms. Um, again, it's all about showing that every path is different. And, you know, there's such an emphasis on STEM right now. Um, really, you know, there are so many industries that need girls 
in these careers and in leadership roles. You know, there are so many paths for girls in leadership and STEM is a big part of it. So leaning into that and, and letting them see that, you know, if you love math, that doesn't mean you're going to be a math teacher. It means you could be an engineer. It means you could be a hundred other things that are really interesting. Let's think about that. So, um, you know, that's the whole idea starting these conversations. Yeah, totally. And I love that you're starting young. I I definitely, that is a passion for me as well with regard to leadership, since you talked about leadership, that, you know, we can't fix some of the ones we have in place right now necessarily, but we can inspire. And I love that you're talking about cultivating curiosity toward how can our leadership change and become better as we grow as a society and in these leadership positions in companies. It's amazing. Yep. Yeah, I love it. So obviously things aren't always um, rainbows and butterflies. What have been what have been some of the biggest sort of missteps or learning opportunities you've had along the way that if you had to advice, give advice to somebody else, what do, oh, what do we need to hear? <laughs> okay, so this is my, first of all, you have to just understand that not everyone is going to like you and not everyone is going to be rah, rah, go you. Um, yes. And it's okay. And that's it's okay. okay. It, you know, that, that actually for my personality is like really hard. And that's something that like, once you get comfortable with, you realize like, if someone doesn't like you, it's usually not about you. It's like something about them. So, um, I had, you know, I do some public speaking and I, at the end, there's like a card where people fill out their thoughts on the speaker. And this was years ago. And someone wrote this comment about how annoying my voice is and how she can't stand me and how I sound. And I, I like looked at it and I was like, okay, like I could see that. Like my accent might be annoying to like a, someone from a different area. And like, I, I didn't like say like, oh, she's so rude. I, I thought like, okay, I could see that. And like, and then I moved on. <laughs> yeah, that is and, amazing. You know, it makes me laugh because like, you know, yeah, like that's okay. Like anyone okay. is allowed to have their perception and it doesn't, it doesn't mean like what it I make it true. Be, right. What I think, like I know my heart and as long as I am trying to do good with what I have, then that's okay. And I think um, a lot of successful people are criticized a lot. So having that ability to know who you are and to to just like forge ahead um, is really important. And I think I think we need empathetic leaders, and I think empathetic people in general have a hard time with that. That's yes. why you see a lot of people who are kind of narcissistic in like high level roles is because they are not impacted by negative feedback. So they tend to rise to the top. And the truth is we need people who have feelings and are connected, but we have to like train ourselves to not let it knock us down. I lo- thank you for saying that. I love that you're saying that it is a message that isn't said enough. Like we could scream it from the rooftops because- yeah. You're right. In order to climb and the higher you climb, the more critics there will be. So yeah, just, it's okay. It's totally fine. That's how, that's what it takes to getting there. Yeah. And you know, I definitely like, I didn't start as obviously we all start somewhere and I really, you know, I, I saw the journey, like I said, it wasn't perfect, but, um, you know, you really, it does change. And, and as you become more successful, the haters kind of come out a little more. (laughs) Of course, of course. Well, because it's like you said, it's a reflection and something about them and whatever that is, that's totally okay too. They're allowed to have whatever perception they have. It is about them. It's usually bringing out other people's insecurities. It's yeah. Many times. And people yeah. say such funny things sometimes, right? Yeah. So you have to just laugh a little bit. Like I've yeah. had multiple people, multiple men actually say, oh, well, I wish I had just written a children's book, but I could have never written that because it's for girls. Like there are a lot of other reasons you couldn't have done this. Like, 
like they're trying to make it sound like I did something it's not a so big deal easy yeah. and mindless and I'm like yeah like yeah. the amount of work you would never I can't even explain the amount of work that goes into a children's book and then in yeah. order to sell 50,000 copies the amount of doors that were closed in my face yeah. and you have to just pick up and call the next person and you have to just say, okay, if this is hard, it probably isn't the right fit. Like the people who get what I'm trying to do are going to get it right away. And, and they did. And what happened was, for example, the Girl Scouts, the Girl Scouts called me, nice. you know, and that was on my long-term wish list. And when you just go with, you know, the people who believe in what you're doing and support you and you surround yourself with those people rather than the negative people, opportunities just keep coming organically. It's like pretty fascinating. The people will, your people will find you and you'll find your people. And you're right. If you waste all your energy on the ones who aren't your people, then you're totally. ignoring the ones who are knocking on your door. It's so true. And, you know, the other thing is just, put it out there, like put out there what you want to have happen. And, you know, it's, yes. it is a lot of people say to me all the time, like, could you ever have imagined that this would be this big? And like, I, I laugh. Cause like, I am like humbly, like so proud of it, but like, I also put in the work. So like, right. it looks like this just like bloomed out of nowhere nobody saw the two years behind the scenes of me basically like putting in, making the calls, pitching, trying to um, put together a marketing plan, like all that stuff. And I think successful people in general want to come across um, that it was easy or that, you know, and it's not easy. And I think, um, yeah, like I think like making it sound easy almost like belittles the effort the amount of work that it took and what it took for you and who you had to become yeah. and all you had to overcome for sure. Yeah. yeah. Like it was, Why it would was you not take easy. that credit away? Yeah. Well, it's not even the credit. It's just the, um, you know, when you're looking at people who are aspirational for their career, you're doing them a disservice by yes. making it look like, oh yeah, it just like showed up and sold a mil you know, all these copies. Like, yes. no, like we had to, we had to spend a lot of time and effort and energy and brainstorming and failure and doors slammed in our face. Yeah. You, I, it, whatever, whoever said the quote, I won't, I, I don't know who to credit, but somebody said you, everybody wants to be where I am, but nobody wants to do what I had to do. And that's such a great example of that. Yeah, yeah. It, that is. There are, yeah, some, that's a great quote. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know who said it, but I'm like, whoever it's, said it, they're amazing. <laughs> it's exactly correct because, you know, it's easy to see that success and, and think, oh, I, you know, I could, I can just get there. Yeah. But it does take all that mountain climbing and all those falls along the way. Um, it's interesting that you were talking about, um, I lost my train of thought. You said something good there a minute ago and you say so many good things. I'm like, I don't even know what I said. I make this stuff up as I go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, obviously so, so much success. Oh, I know what it was. You, you said it at the beginning. You have to decide ahead of time what you want the dream and the goal to be in order to keep yourself relentless, keep yourself committed, keep that spark going all the way through, even when the doors are slamming in your face. So while yes, you're right, you're humbled and you're so proud of it. Like you couldn't have ever gotten it if you hadn't decided in advance that you were going to make it big, that you were going to do it. Yes. And we actually haven't gotten there yet because when I put the, when I pitched this, I had something in mind and I've said it from day one. And I said, I'm not going to stop until we're on Good Morning America. So I, as far as I'm concerned, we've achieved a lot, but we still haven't yeah. achieved the thing that I, that I put as I my, love it. as my inspiration. So, you know, I really want to, um, yeah, to, to be on Good Morning America. That was the original goal. Well, clearly you're going to get there and you're putting everything out there in the world for that to manifest, no doubt, because when you put that energy in, all that comes back to you. So when somebody asked you, could you have ever imagined you would have gotten this far? You'd be like, I'm not done yet. You're saying I'm, I'm not, not even done, done. Yet. Just getting I'm started. I'm not done yet. And what's really crazy is, and this is super exciting, 
Um, we have other industries who want to really um, take the message of the house that she built and apply it to other industries. So I right now it. we're actually working on the car that she built. And yeah, and the whole idea is to have all STEM careers that really need girls um, and, and do the same thing in other industries and just really change the conversation and cultivate that curiosity and um, tell a compelling story to that really young learner. So inspiring. I love this. Did, now that I bet you didn't imagine happening. <laughs> so... So you did? I, you did? So I always knew I oh, my vision I was it. I know. My vision, I had two different paths that I thought okay. we would go in. One path would be that we would get ultra trade specific and have like the architect book line and the gotcha. engineer book line. And the other was to make it more big picture and go into other industries. Amazing. And I did, I really went back and forth. I really didn't know for a long time. And then Ford called me and they are, they have an entire education side to what they do. They're really committed to education in local communities. And they were like, you know, we love this book. We, we, we can use it, but we also think it could be something that we do for cars and bridges and computers. And so that's really where I was like, oh, wow, this could be much bigger. Um, we can really well, use this for, for different industries. So it happened organically just by who showed up and what they asked for. Yeah. Yeah. There, I love it. It's so inspiring. What, what an impressive story. And there's a piece that you told me earlier, I want to circle back on is sometimes we have ideas of go the goals and the plans. And we also have ideas of the timelines of when things are going to happen. And for you, like you recognized when the time was right, the opportunity sort of came together organically and you were wise enough to know that that was on your radar. It was something you already knew you wanted to do and you had to wait for the right time. And sometimes we have to be patient for that. And I, that I love is, that you said that. Yeah, it is so true. So the book, you know, the idea happened at the exact exact right time in my life. I was at like a, a very sad time, you know, with our family and I needed something and I had always wanted to write a children's book. And I, it was during COVID, we were at home and I had the time to actually think and put it together. So even though, you know, I have wanted to write a children's book for my whole life. And then when I came to the housing industry, I knew I wanted to write a children's book about housing and careers. Um, but it just wasn't the right time. Like I needed that one little thing. And then everything was, it, it became the right time at that moment. And I, um, I think that that, you know, that's really important is you don't have to do everything at the one moment. You have to kind of see who's around you, see where you are, but take advantage of opportunities as they come. Because had I not done it then, it wouldn't have happened because, you know, then other things happen and, you know, business pulls me in a different direction. And um, yeah, I think, I think making that decision and making it happen in that moment was, was key. For sure. And rec like you said, recognizing when, when it's here and, and jumping on it. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and really, truthfully, I've had a lot of ideas that haven't worked. Um, and what, what is so important is recognizing when the opportunity is there and when you should jump it, but also just as important and possibly more important is recognizing when to call it quits. So a lot of people, you know, you can't be so in love with every idea that you're not willing to to be real about it. So like that like, it objectively. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I've had a lot of ideas where I think it's going to be something big and it's not. And then I move on to the next thing. So, yep. um, you know, that all goes along with your reinventing, you know, you, mm -hmm. one of my biggest, biggest assets to my success is I'm a creative person. And I don't mean that I can draw and I can write, which I can a little bit. I mean, more professionally, like I can, I can visualize and create in my head, like the next thing. Um, and I think that served me really well. 
Yeah. That's amazing. Well, obviously. Yes. Yes. Served you very well. So you have, you, you, we talked, we've been talking about books. I see you have a good stack back there. This might not apply, but what is, is there a book that you're reading now or one that was, that's jumping out at you as particularly inspiring? Yes. So I am an avid reader. I love reading. It is for me, like how I let my brain calm down. So a lot of like high achievers, like you can't settle your mind. Um, you know, for me, like I'm, I get ideas as soon as I close my eyes and lie down, that's when the ideas come or I'm in the shower or it just ideas happen all the time. So for me, reading is how I get into someone else's mind and I am creative and I love creative work. So I read novels. I don't read business books. I have a million business books, but I will typically go for more of like the cliff notes or just like read the main points. Um, It's not like what lights me up. I love creative writing. And so I typically, um, I will read, I I, right now in my office, I have 50 books probably that I want to read. So just what, like with life and business, I think books kind of are meant to be read at at the right point and the right time. So that's why I can never be in a book club because I never want to read the exact book that they're reading. Um, So I love to read what is on the bestseller list. And I I will tell you why. Um, Being in marketing, I find consumer behavior fascinating. And I, that is where my natural curiosity is. So I love to know what the masses are gravitating towards. So I tend to go, yeah. So I tend to look at the New York times bestseller list, Reese Witherspoon's book list and Oprah's book list. And I, if something sounds interesting, even if I don't want to read it that moment, I'll buy it because I know I will want to read it. So um, that's how I decide what to read. And I love creative writing. Amazing. Well, that's good inspiration for me. I don't read enough creative writing, uh, creative writing, and I need to, and I'd like to, but I am very similar to you. I'm not, I'm going to read a, a chunk of this one and then I might move on to another one, but they're all ready for me whenever I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, what's nice about, um, I I just like creative thinking in general. So to me, even reading like a beach book, that is just a silly story. It's, you know, people think, oh, well, this isn't an intellectual book. This isn't a business book. This is, you know, summer beach reading or, or whatever. No, like it's creative writing and you're learning um, about, you know, storytelling, right. In yeah, business yeah. and success, how important is storytelling and storytelling and just being more dynamic and diverse totally. and allows your mind to expand. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, those beach books that I used to kind of think like, oh, I don't want anyone to see I'm reading this. Like, it's, it's <laughs> the not, trashy novel. Yeah. Right. Like I'm reading like a romance novel, but yeah. it's, there's a reason it's a bestseller. Um, And now having gone through the publishing process, I realized like for those authors to get to that point, it is extremely difficult. So even like respecting that author as a, as someone who I know is a good um, business person and and has gotten to that level. So what it takes. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, what is ahead for you? And, you know, aside from Good Morning America, we know that's going to happen, but what else? What's ahead for you? What's ahead for group two? Where are you, where are you going? Yeah. Group two is, you know, we're always shifting, always evolving. Um, right now we are planning for some partnerships, um, getting more into combining sales and marketing into a joint kind of curriculum, Um, making sure that as the market is kind of shifting for the home building industry, it has shifted, that we're proactive and that we are able to help businesses where they are today and and adjust our business to a changing market. So So yeah, um, you know, we talk a lot, we talked a lot about just like change in general. And I will say one of the things about group two is group two is always changing. And I think a lot of humans in general, like present themselves as, oh, I'm not someone who likes change. And I have to tell you that is, it is very hard to be successful if you are someone who just doesn't like change, 
because the world is is changing so fast and how people communicate is changing so fast. And, you know, I started my career doing social media marketing. I couldn't even touch social media today. I don't even, I wouldn't even know the first thing about it. Um, it just changes faster than ever before. And that means you have to change. So, you know, we change the tools we use. We change our policies for the company. We change, you know, really just constantly we are changing and evolving and it can feel unsettling for some people who like consistent, you know, each day with that, you know, I, for us, that is, um, how we have continued to grow and evolve. I love that. And you're right. We did talk about that and just, just accepting that we are in an, a world and particularly an industry that just look back. <laughs> There's never been a time that it stayed the same way for any extended period of time ever in history of home building in the industry. So, you know, it always, it always like entertains me. I kind of want to laugh a little bit when I see that panicky, oh my gosh, why isn't it the way that it was two years ago? Well, of course it's not. That's, it never has been. (laughs) Well, that's what, that, I am so glad you said that because that kind of cracks me up too, is when people are just frantic when the market is shifting. And I'm like, you realize you're in housing, right? Right. (laughs) Like the housing market has a cycle. Like we are, you, it doesn't just like your career. We said it doesn't just go like that. I mean, if you're not prepared for the down cycle, you're kind of in the wrong industry. Right. Right. And there is no industry you can go in probably that I know of that you're not going to at least have to be affected by it to some degree. Right. And like, <laughs> but particularly we, we know it one. goes down and we also know it comes back up. So if you don't plan for your business for the downs, like you probably shouldn't have a business. Yeah. Yeah. It's and so you true. Probably won't. <laughs> and you probably won't. That's right. Yeah. If you're not prepared to make those shifts and embrace, embrace the opportunities that come with change too, because like you said, the growth the, ch- the change brings all the new learning, all the fresh ways, all the new technology, whatever the shifts are. So that's, that's the fun part. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So as you look at those partnerships are, and you continue to grow as a leader, what's next for you? How are you a work in progress now in terms of what you know you need to do to be the le- best leader you can be for your team? Yeah. To me, I, I, I think it's a constant evaluation of what I can be doing better. I look at it, I I look at goals and like planning and stuff in a lot of different ways. I look at it as like right now. Um, I probably focus more on today and the moment more than I focus on like down the road. Um, at this point in my career, I think earlier on, I was more thinking about five years from now. Um, I think for me, I, you know, continuing to in, improve, not just in my professional life, just in my life. Like to me, there is no, you know, I wear many hats. Like I'm a business owner. I'm a mom. I am an author. I am, but I'm not, I'm not any of them one at a time. I'm always all of them. So, you know, it's, um, you know, how can I do that better? How can I, Um, make sure I am focusing on the areas that I need, knowing that you can't have it all at the same time. Uh, And honoring what is most important to you at at that time, whatever that is, and being willing to say no to the other things because this is important. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That is very hard for people. You know, there is that whole idea that you know, you can only have three of the five main things at one time. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's yes, sleep, yes, yes. exercise, friendships, family, and career. And you have to pick three. You can't <laughs> have all five. And, you know, I actually love that idea because it is true. But for me, you could have three one day and different three in the next day. So it doesn't have to be like that is, you know, you're never going to have time for friends. It is in that moment, you're focusing on work and your family and your career. And yeah. And I think people forget that they get to be in charge of that all the time. Like they're not at the effect of the other things they get to choose. If it's family this week, it can be friends next week and that's totally okay. Yeah. Yeah. You get to choose that. Yeah. So good. 
You have been such an inspiration. So great for you to come in and talk about leadership. I love that you are such a role model in the industry, of course, for women, of course, and for kids. I love that you're what you're doing. How can somebody find you and find out more about the book and the work that you're doing to support you going forward? Yeah. So our website is the house that she built.com. Love it. And there are free lesson plans, free downloads, activities that parents can do at home, that groups can do. Um, we have, you know, merchandise. We have, you know, all a lot of resources, information on the Girl Scout patch, um, information on the book, everything that's happening. So um, that is really for the house that she built movement. And then my company is group two. It's spelled out group TWO.com. And that's where you can learn more about what we're doing on the agency side and the marketing side. Amazing. Amazing. And keep and follow you and see what your, your path, where your path goes. And hopefully when you're on good morning America, everybody will be watching you then. I was just thinking any, anyone listening, if you have any <laughs> contacts, this is my humble ask of please, um, help us make this happen. Six so. degrees of separation proves that there's somebody who right? does. I'm just putting it out there yeah. in the world. Totally. <laughs> Keep doing that. Keep doing that. It's going to happen. Yes. Thank oh. you, Molly, so much for being uh, with my podcast today and in my audience to hear you and hear your story of success and so proud of everything that you've done. And I'm going to keep watching a big fan and, um, and supporting every, all your efforts and everything that you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you. This was really fun. Awesome. Take care. Strive Leadership Development guides leaders toward their greatest potential. We hope you'll check out what we've been up to at striveleadershipdevelopment.com.